I was gonna rip his heart out. I'm the best ever. I'm the most brutal and vicious and most ruthless champion there's ever been. There's no one can stop me. Lynx is a conqueror. No, I'm Alexander. He's no Alexander. I'm the best ever. There's never been anybody as ruthless. I'm Sonny Liston. I'm Jack Dempsey. There's no one like me. I'm from their claws. There's no one Today, we live in an era where there is an overflow of opportunity. Everything is in abundance. We have multiple career options. We can have any questions we have answered immediately. We have Tinder, we have Instagram or any other dating website to hook up with a partner. So why are so many people in this time depressed and don't feel fulfilled? After all, we should have everything we want, right? Well, the answer is, guys, we are trying to do it all. Because we do have an abundance of choice. We waste our time concentrating on many different choices and opportunities all the time. This book isn't about not caring or giving a F about nothing. As Mark Manson says, the author of the book, we need to discover what the most important thing is to ourselves and only concentrate doing that. Everything else we shouldn't give a F about. I have read this book guys and I loved it, it's definitely making up in my top 3 favorites of all time. It has changed my life and how I feel life, it really did and I wanted to share my top 5 biggest keys, biggest takeaways I have gathered from this book with you guys. These are for me life changing keys and I hope it inspires you guys to take action in some kind of form to to be your better self. So the number one key idea is whatever you do in life will be a struggle. So you need to find the struggle that's worth struggling for you. What is what is it that you really want out of life? What is your ultimate end goal in life? What are, what what are you want to be remembered like? The things you want written on your headstone, right? Well, most of us have fake conceptions like I want to be happy or loving family and a job that I enjoy. But the problem here is that these are fake ambitions and having fake ambitions won't push you to strive for success. If you want to achieve anything in life, you will definitely have to struggle. You will face many setbacks and obstacles along the way. This will naturally happen. If you don't have a goal you are determined to achieve, you will fall in the face of obstacle. Like Benjamin Franklin said, if you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. Let's say your goal is to be a CEO. Being a CEO is cool, right? All the power and money. And yet, being a CEO is far from a walk in the park. Because CEOs work like 60 hours in a work week. They have a big responsibility and have to fire people all the time. If, if, if you are not hell-bent on becoming a CEO, you will struggle with the hard work and you will fail most likely. Well, struggle is unavoidable, guys. Therefore, you have to find something that is worth struggling for. You have to find out what you really enjoy doing. By working on something that you enjoy, you will face the tough challenges and will grow to love it. As the author of this book came to realize that he enjoyed writing about dating, he made a blog about it and decided to focus on it. He was challenged at first, but he survived it because he loved what he did. Eventually the struggle paid off. He gained hundreds of thousands of su subscribers and he made a living of it. The key here is guys, there is no point in looking for an easy life, because struggle is everywhere. So instead, find a goal and struggle for that goal that's worth pursuing for you. Key idea number two, having the right values. So suffering, it is inevitable, but if you have the right values, you still won't be, never be happy. Take for example the guitarist Dave Mustaine, right? Mustaine was thrown out of his band in 1983, right before they were on the cusp of fame. Mustaine got very angry and started his own band to prove to his former bandmates how wrong they'd been. 
He worked hard for two years straight to improve his skill and went on to find new bandmates to make an even better band. The band he eventually made was named Megadeth, a band that's widely hugely popular with 25 million records being sold. Even though Mustaine achieved great success, he was not happy. He continued to compare himself with his former band. The name of his former band was Metallica, one of the world's biggest music acts of all time. Because he compared himself to Metallica, he considered, cons considered his self as a failure, even though he achieved great success. The only way he would feel happy was to be better than his former bandmates, which meant that he was basically doomed. You need to find healthier values to judge your achievements by. If you look at Pete Best, we can find a perfect example of having the right value. Just as Dave Mustaine, Pete was kicked out of his band just before they would be famous. Unfortunately for Pete, this group happened to be the Beatles, the biggest band of all time. Pete suffered from deep depression, watching his bandmates becoming successful. It was not very pleasant to watch for him. Then Pete went on to switch his values, he wanted to do something about the values he'd have. He came to realize what was important for him and wanted a loving family and a happy home life. He still liked playing music, but he was not overly invested in becoming successful or the lack of it to define his life. Because he reconsidered his values, he led a happy, fulfilled life and went on to make music again, but this time for less successful bands. The key here is, in happiness, our values should have a higher priority than success. Key ID number three letting go of identity this one is my favorite one guys but here we go imagine you're a manager at a big company you like your job you have a nice car a hot girlfriend whatever nice clothes respect from the people around you right but most of all you like being a manager being a manager is your identity let's say you have an opportunity to get right to the top but there is a substantial risk in other words, if you fail to pull it off, you will lose your job, car, the respect, and most importantly, your identity. Most people will not risk this. Mark, the author of the book, calls this the Manson's law of avoidance. The tendency to flee anything that threatens our identity. Although avoiding major risks, such as that described above, may seem like a smart move, our desperation to protect our identity is more an obstacle than a help. We can take the example of rappers. Many rappers refuse to publicize or sell their work or, or they're scared that other people will dislike their music. They are terrified that people will not like their music. Rapping and failing will destroy their identity. They have this image, this uh, video of being or becoming the great rapper which, which is actually an, well, illusion because they never try to rap at all. And this is why it's, it's important to let go of your identity because if you attach on your identity, you will be also attached of the outcome and you will be attached that you will give a F if your identity will be destroyed. And when you take action, that action might also destroy your identity. And in the end, you will never take action at all. So this is why it, this really helped me. Like I, when I let go of like thinking of myself that I was like this guy that like that can do everything. I can't feel everything I do is right, right? So it, it kind of like held me back from doing a lot of action because I was scared of its failure. And now I've just let go of everything, the outcome. Like this might also, this YouTube channel might probably be the result of this principle. For example, Buddhists don't believe in identity. They even call it an illusion. All the labels we give to ourselves are merely mental constructs. They are not real. Whether it is rich, poor, happy, sad, successful, smart, failure, whatever, the truth is, 
that these labels are not real and we shouldn't let them dictate our lives. The key here is guys, you must learn to let go of your identity. Trust me, this will help you immensely. For example, you may have always considered yourself to be a career-minded person and this has meant that you have always put your job first right? and your family and hobbies second. Free yourself from this identity and you'll be able to do whatever makes you happy. Whether that be spending time with your kids or spitting hot bars on the beats, right? This key helped me to detach myself from my identity and it was really liberating and I am enjoying that I'm sharing this right now with you guys. It was a wonderful experience like a slave being free from my, from my identity that held me back from basically enjoying my life. Key ID number four. Romantic love can be destructive. We all know Romeo and Juliet. It is perhaps the most known love story of all time. And yet it isn't quite a happy one. It's more of a chaotic story with both lovers committing suicide in the end. It's not very fun. This story shows the destructive power of romantic love. Because according to science, deep romantic love has a similar stimulating effect on the brain as cocaine. In other words, an intense high and then you crash back down. The next thing you do is search for the high again. A formula for basically pain and torment. So you might be wondering, are you saying that I should give up on the idea of love? Not quite. There is an healthy and unhealthy romantic. It is unhealthy when each partner runs away from their personal problems and uses the relationship for this purpose. For example, they might be unhappy with their lives and use their feelings for each other as a distraction. Just like people drinking alcohol basically to drift their problems away. Unfortunately, no one can run away from personal problems forever. And so this avoidance strikes back like a boomerang in the face. But when it comes down to healthy love, this happens when both partners are invested in the relationship, not for the distraction, but they are devoted to each other. Rather than being selfish and concentrating on their own feelings, each partner offers to support each other. This support, however, has to be uh, desired. If a partner oversteps boundaries and wants to control the other, for example, to solve all their problems for them, problems will arise. If one partner seeks to dominate the other, this is clearly a sign of an unhealthy relationship. The key here is, guys, think about the cocaine example. Take a look at love, take a look at what it does to people. Key ID number 5. Stop striving for immortality. Sometimes we live life like we are going to live forever, like not worrying about it. Like It might kind of make you feel uncomfortable, but you are going to die one day. You probably already knew this. How we deal with this fact has a lot to do with how we live our lives. We can look at how much death has control over our lives if we look at the studies of Ernst Becker. I hope I pronounced that well. A doctor of anthropology, his unconventional approach and early death limited his ac academic career, but he wrote a very influential book about dying. The name of the book was The Denial of Death. The main idea in this book was Humans are scared to death of dying. Unlike other creatures of this planet, humans can think about what it could be like. We can imagine what our lives would be like if we did astronomy instead of law or something. Or say, decided to live in California instead of New York. 
This ability, however, has a downside. Because we can also imagine what life will be like after we are dead. Since we know we are going to die, we try to make a conceptual self that will live on after we are gone. In other words, we spend our lives seeking to put out a legacy on earth to endure immortality in a sense. This is the reason why people chase fame while others may seek to make a mark in religion, politics or business. Even worse, destruction and misery is all coming from this dream of immortality. What's more is that it, it is also unhealthy for us as individuals. The desperate urge to make a mark on earth causes us immense amount of stress and anxiety. The key here is that we have to stop striving for immortality. We need to stop giving a F about fame and power and instead looking, looking for meaning in the here and now. Not trying to sound hippie but, but look meaning in the present and spread happiness and joy where you are. Not giving a F shouldn't be just be limited to the thoughts of death. Trying to be it all basically leads to pain. If you want a happy life, just focus on the things you enjoy yourself. Be the healthy relationship or the joyful struggle you want to have to achieve something great. Everything else is just pointless distraction guys.